strugglers, I've been watching a lot of children's programming lately. Uh, I just, I just like it. No other reason. A lot of the characters in these shows have some kind of really cool secret hideout. And it makes perfect sense for a kid's show. That sense of wonder, the endless imagination that comes with a secret fort. I used to build secret forts every chance I got. Cardboard boxes in the garage? Secret fort. My classmates' winter coats behind the cubbies in the elementary classroom? Secret fort. Inside the local water tower? I actually never got around to that. At the start of every episode of the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they say the secret words and this entire freaking neighborhood is revealed. What are the mechanisms that produce these structures? Where were they hiding in the first place? Where can I get the blueprints to build this myself? Corbin points at it and asks about it every single time it comes on. I don't know how to tell him no. The characters on Codename Kids Next Door had that really cool treehouse hideout that I bet was sick. Uh, I wouldn't know, I didn't watch Cartoon Network, I was not a juvenile delinquent. And there are countless other examples, so I would like to dive into some of the coolest secret forts from my childhood, and what better place to do it than from our own secret fort. Come on. Big in here, huh? Roomy. Oh good, there's a microphone. Okay, so by the time we're done today, we'll have all the information we need in order to build the perfect secret hideout. And my kids will think I'm literally the coolest dad in existence. This is probably gonna be the chillest video of all time. Uh, Jaden just gave birth to our second boy <laughs> like a week ago, and we're all just in chill mode right now. So feel free to also be in chill mode. Let's just hang out for a little bit, huh? Okay, let's start. I've talked at length about how much of a role the PBS Kids show Zoom played in unlocking my creativity as a child. Everything I saw on that show, I wanted to do. Well, similar to that, I also have this memory of going over to my grandparents' house, turning on cable, because we didn't have it at home, and seeing for the first time out of the box. They had me believing that this group of goody two-shoes created a full studio-sized hangout zone out of just some junky old cardboard boxes. And the craziest part? They did it without a permit. The whole idea of this just blew my mind wide open. This little structure put together with stuff that you could find just lying around the house can contain all of this? And you don't even need a permit? I see the vision, and this is what started my love for secret forts. I remember grabbing all the pillows and cushions off of the couches and stacking them up into a little structure, and I would just sit in there with my eyes closed for like hours at a time. <laughs> I would pretend that I was in a castle or a bunker, or like summer camp. I always wanted to go to summer camp, I never got to go. My parents spent many years decorating for our church's VBS program in the summer. So they would build all these cool sets and like decorate the rooms to match the theme that year. But I always wanted to build an out of the box fort at our house. And we never did. We, we did stuff inside, but I wanted to build it out in the yard. And I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I'm not grateful. So there's one kind of secret for it. How about something that's a little bit more techy, more futuristic perhaps? What do you think about that? I was already like phasing out of watching Nickelodeon and Disney Channel by the time Phineas and Ferb came out, but I still saw enough of it to appreciate how kick-ass of a show that was. And one of the fun little side stories that always took place was about their pet, Perry the Platypus, and how he was the secret agent. I'm explaining Phineas and Ferb, you know, <laughs> you know Phineas and Ferb, but you better believe that Perry the Platypus has his own secret hideout. And this place is wicked, right? All kinds of vehicles and computers and sci-fi weaponry. <laughs> but that's not stuff that most of us would ever need. I mean, come on. No, no, no. The main gimmick that I loved about this secret hideout were all of the hidden entrances. There were a ridiculous amount of those. It doesn't matter where Perry is, he's always within a few feet of a secret entrance. It's like that fun fact that's something like, you, no matter where you are in the continental US, you're within 120 miles of a McDonald's. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. I mostly just wanted to share that fun fact with you. <laughs> Have you ever seen one of those mansion tours where they've got like a hidden movie theater behind a bookcase or something? That's good stuff, man. <laughs> I love that. So surely the perfect secret hideout also needs hidden entrances. I mean, come on. But not only that, because they double as secret exits. And it's always good to have an escape plan, right? Are you taking notes? Corbin's current go-to hiding spot is behind this chair right here. He's got two options here and here for escape. He's already on the right track. Kid knows his stuff. I will say the biggest downside to Perry's secret lair is as far as I could find, he does not have a permit for any of this. Oh. 
Is that Goddard? <laughs> Speaking of Goddard, let's talk about Jimmy Neutron. But first, Perry has to protect his identity, right? That's very important to him. Well, it should be important to you as well. And today's sponsor, Aura, can help you do just that. <laughs> it might freak you out a little bit, but take a second to Google yourself. Dive in a little bit and see just how much of your personal information you can find. Addresses, phone numbers, family members' addresses and phone numbers. Good grief. Data brokers collect and sell all of your information to the highest bidder. And a lot of those bidders are scummy little dorks. And that's where Aura comes in. One of the many important things that Aura does is submit opt-out requests to those websites that have your information on them. And when they do that, those sites are legally obligated to remove your information. A few years ago, I tried to go in manually and remove my information from like five different sites and it took hours. And even after I did that, my stuff just kept popping up on other websites. Aura continuously submits new requests and makes sure that new ones are not sneaking through. Aura also offers other services like a VPN, antivirus protection, password monitoring, among other things. And getting all of that stuff in the same place through Aura is a good way to save money instead of doing a bunch of other services separately. If you're interested, you can go to aura.com slash Scott Kramer to start your two week free trial. And that is also linked down in the description. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you guys for using my links when I have them. Helps me out a ton. Now let's get back to talking about secret hideouts in kids shows, I guess. Jimmy Neutron's lab is complete and utter nonsense. This child? This, 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 this stripling building an impossibly intricate underground lab filled with frankly millions of dollars worth of equipment covering more square footage than the freaking Manhattan Project. You expect me to buy that? How dare you? We get a good look at his lab in the Jimmy Neutron movie and you can really see the vastness of this place here. It's one of those things that seemed like it would change periodically over time. Like it just kind of was whatever it needed to be in order to tell the story of that episode. You wanna hear a conspiracy theory I came up with today while I was thinking about this? I'm sure some nerd has already said this somewhere at some point, but uh, let's go with it. I don't think the lab is even real. I think it's more like that room that Troy and Abed had in their apartment in Community, and it's all just kind of in their imagination. There's a scene from an episode where Jimmy went back in time, and you can see what the little basement used to look like. I think it still looks like that all the time. And we're just seeing it, you know, from the perspective of their little imaginations. They're just playing make-believe like SpongeBob and Patrick in that box. Isn't that sweet to think of it that way? You know the part at the end of Iron Man 3 where all of those suits show up to kind of save the day? There's a scene in the Jimmy Neutron movie that it's all I could think about the first time I saw Iron Man 3. <laughs> the Jimmy Neutron version pulls it off so much better, I think. Okay, let's. I want to talk about Oscar's trash can now. Does the trash can really count as a secret hideout? Mm, I don't... Yeah, maybe not. I mean, it's right off the street. It's literally sitting right there. It's on Sesame Street. Ever heard of it? But the inside of the can is a little mysterious. What's it like in there? Stinky? I... <laughs> <laughs> what is this video? I remember seeing an episode one time where Elmo goes in there with a little video camera and they were running around in the dark like there was actually a ton of space in this little can. How can that be? Magic, perhaps? It's joked about pretty often that Oscar has like pet elephants and this whole farm and stuff down there. Well, here's the smoking gun that you didn't think I would find. There was this movie <laughs> called The Adventures of Elmo in Grouchland, where we see the inside of the can in pretty good detail. And what's that filthy boy got going on down there? Well, here it is. Take a look at this. Damning, to be sure. That little fiend. I mean, what are the chances he even has a permit for this? I say low. There's also an amusement park somewhere that has a ride where you get to see another version of the inside of his trash can. And good grief, look how spacious it is. I don't know why I'm even bringing this up, really. <laughs> I've just been fascinated by this dang trash can since I was a very little boy and I needed an outlet to talk about it. So I figured now was the time. Because what, like I said, you know, we're just chilling, we're relaxing and we're not taking ourselves too seriously today, okay? The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lived in a sewer. I like that transition. And I wanted to be in there with them so bad. Why did I yearn for the nastiest of hideouts? The 2003 TV show was cool and that secret lair was awesome, okay? But I was always a sucker for the one in the classic movies. And to be fair, in those, they did technically live in an abandoned subway station, so not technically a sewer, but this is still cool, I guess. The first scene of them discovering this spot in The Secret of the Ooze is still one of my favorite moments in cinematic history, okay? And I'm not exaggerating. But we do get an even better look at how they've settled 
in during the Turtles in Time movie. It's such a bachelor pad. I mean, the dorm room aesthetic is off the charts. Honestly, just guys being dudes. And what a cozy feeling for such a filthy space, you know? Do you? No? Is it? Am I alone here? I like it. It makes me want to heat up a plate of pizza rolls and play frickin' Hot Wheels Turbo Racing on the N64. Okay, I tried to stay on topic with the actual secret hideouts after the Oscars trash can thing, but I have to say something. This is another very specific thing from like 20 plus years ago. Let me look it up. Okay, so there was this episode of Hey Arnold where, <laughs> where Arnold's friend Stinky grows this big ass pumpkin for like some local competition or something. And at the end of the episode, they hollow that bad boy out and they use it as a little clubhouse and they play cards in there. And I just obsess over this. It never comes up again. It's literally never mentioned. It's just the one little scene at the end of that episode and I've been thinking about it on and off you know a couple times a year since I saw it when I was like six is this the perfect secret hideout it might be I don't know we have more that we have to look at before we make a decision okay let's talk about Teletubbies is this little grassy hobbit like home really a secret hideout honestly I stopped caring about that a while ago <laughs> if you're still watching at this point I don't think you care either. <laughs> so the Teletubbies grassy dome in real life was actually out on this farm in Warwickshire. Warwickshire? I'm sorry, Warwickshire is how you pronounce it. What a beautiful spot. I mean, they didn't need a permit. They're on a farm. I like this a lot because it's not just a cool spot to hang out. It's not like a, a little place to kind of hide away. It's much more than that. You know, it's their actual home and it comes with its own cheeky little vacuum butler guy. Was the vacuum a butler? Is that it? I, or was it some kind of pet? What was going on with the Teletubbies, honestly? They were doing some wacky sh**. I remember going to either McDonald's or Burger King as a kid, and they had this promotional thing going on where they were like giving out tubby custard with kids meals. And I'm pretty sure it was just like pink yogurt or something, but I, whoa. There's six beanbag finger puppets to collect in all. Get one in every tasty kids club hamburger meal you buy. Still just $1.99. And try a Teletubby's favorite, tubby custard from Jell-O, only at Burger King. I only had it one single time. I'd be embarrassed to admit how often I, I think about that. And you know, honestly, I hope that someday my kids can have as fond of memories as this one. <laughs> Another cool thing that the Teletubbies had was that slide. I feel like a slide is kind of a staple, you know, in a good secret hideout. It's functional for getting in and or out very quickly. And you know, it gives you the chance to say, we, and we honestly are just are not given that opportunity enough. Okay, this one's very important. When I was a boy, we used to live a few miles outside of town on this old farmstead. I would explore the abandoned barn and wade through all the rusty nails in the old Quonset. It was a dream home for me as a kid because my imagination could just run wild. So there were so many cool things there. I have a lot of great memories from living there. But my favorite thing was the big tree. This tree was so big, dude. <laughs> and it was so old that somebody had leaned a wagon wheel against it Lord knows how long ago. I mean, probably like 10,000 years or something. And the tree had grown around the wagon wheel. It was like holding onto it like this. Like, you, you, you can't get out of here, wagon wheel. I mean, what the heck? That's spooky. That's like a quest you'd go on in RuneScape back in the day. You gotta free the wagon wheel, you know, for the wizard. <laughs> I never really did the quest. I just kind of hung out. I liked, I liked just hanging out in RuneScape. But anyway, the tree. So on the back side of the tree was this little empty space. It was like a little, uh, a little nook, if you will. Uh, and you must. The perfect little place to nestle up, you know, just cozy in there and hide away from the rest of the world. From my responsibilities. Oh, I got swimming lessons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. It's too busy hiding in the tree hole. My family would have bonfires a few times a week when we lived there. And a game that we liked to play was we would hide these little mini glow sticks in the area and then see who could find them first. And I hid that glow stick right in my tree hole and nobody stood a chance. I gotta say these things out loud before I start recording. So anyway, the reason I'm even talking about this is because there's one episode of Caillou where Caillou's grandpa shows him 
a little nook, a little hidden space in an old tree on their property that the grandpa used to play in when he was a kid. Or maybe the, it was the dad. I honestly don't remember. But I watched that episode maybe one time and I thought this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. A little tree fort in an actual tree. He had little toys in there. He would just go in there and chill. It was so much cooler seeing that knowing that we had that on our property. I could be Caillou without being a little piece of shit. So anyway, that one might actually be my favorite, my favorite secret hideout of all of them. And not for nothing, the little Einsteins used something pretty much just like this to get down to their secret hideout. So that's kind of fun. It was almost like I had the potential for a very cool secret hideout under our property if I had a permit. And you know who else has that same hidden entrance in the tree? Harry the Platypus. Oh, Thank yeah, you. Dude. Thank Amazing you. Honestly, I know. Guy. I try. So there you go, guys. That is a full circle moment for you. I am an expert filmmaker. I want to end this by highlighting a fictional restaurant that I would absolutely frequent if it was real. Your first thought might be something like the Krusty Krab, right? Wrong! Imagine the antics that take place there. It'd be a miserable dining experience. It truly would. I'm also disqualifying the Chill Grill from That's So Raven for the same reasons. I want to go somewhere that I can actually enjoy my food in peace, and that's why I nominate Bueno Nacho from Kim Possible. I would love to just settle into a booth with a tray of cheap tacos and let the world melt away. Think about all the memories you could make here. Grabbing an enchilada with your friends after prom. Sulking into a burrito bowl after you get fired from your first job. There's actually this building that sits out kind of in an open field just outside of Fargo that for years I thought looked like Bueno Nacho. You can see it from the highway. So Jaden and I went there one time many years ago. Uh, they were not serving affordable Mexican food unfortunately. I think it has something to do with like air traffic control maybe? I don't know. I left starving and probably on a list. So anyway, there's a bunch of like fun secret hideouts that I remember from shows when I was a kid. I was trying to come up with what's the point of this? Why did I do this? Um, I don't think I need to justify that. <laughs> I don't think I need a point. Why do I need a point? Did you get something out of this? That's awesome. Okay, good. Did you not? Dude, that's your fault. You should have left a long time ago. You saw where this was going. I just wanted to do something lighthearted and goofy. I don't have the time really right now to plan something. Like I said, we just had our second child, so. Not a lot of free time lately. I'm, it's, you know, I waited for the kids to go to bed to even film this. Thanks for coming into the fort and listening to me ramble for a little bit. It was fun. Go ahead and share some other cool you know, secret hideouts that you know of from other shows that I didn't watch. Like I said, I need inspiration for future forts for the kids. So, um, greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier on there. You guys, we should organize an event where we build a big old cardboard fort. Just name the time and the place. I'll be there. <laughs> Remember to check your subscriptions tab on YouTube. Don't just let the algorithm tell you what to watch all the time. A lot of people in the America's Got Talent video were asking about my, uh, my shirt that I was wearing. And that is just one of many things that will be released soon. Again, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to go get a couple hours of sleep. Have a good rest of your day, guys. All right, see ya, bye. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. I said so long.